Yo, 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 what's up, Sooner fans? This is your host from the Prairie back home, Jeremiah Hall, formerly number 27 on the field, but always number one in your hearts. Here with me today, you know who it is, my right-hand man, number nine on the field, our captain and fearless leader, the Braden Weight Room Willie Willis. And this is the podcast on the Prairie. Braden? Hey. Good evening. Good evening, uh, my man. A little bit. A little, we haven't recorded this late in a while. I know. I'm saying. I was just looking at my face. I'm like, something seems off. And I couldn't figure it out. Figure it out. And then I realized it was the lighting. I'm like, normally I have the windows right here in front of me open. Mm-hmm. And uh, I look a little bit more uh, handsome. I guess you would say. I, I, I was going to say cute, but I'm like, I think my uh, our, our fans would get on to me about that one. So um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I had to pull up something white on the screen so that way I can get a little bit more uh, more more white sunlight instead of the, the normal red warming <laughs> lights off the ceiling. So, uh, Hey, Jay. What's good? Guess what? What up? We didn't turn the ball over once versus Kent State. Can you tell the fans how important that is? Bro, it is super important to protect the football. As a matter of fact, did you know that typically whoever wins the turnover battle in a football game normally gets the W? Just as important as taking care of the ball on the field is taking care of your property off of it. And that's where Plainview Legal comes in. And if you're contacted by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority about acquiring your land to build a turnpike, you have rights. Haley and Travis Dennis are diehard Sooners. Haley has even taught a real estate transactions class at the OU College of Law. They'll fight tirelessly to protect what you value most because your property is their priority. When your property rights are in jeopardy, it's imperative to team up with experienced property attorneys who will have your back. Helping you navigate tough times with guidance and support, working to get you efficient, client-driven results. Sooner Nation, to schedule your free consultation, visit their website at www.plainviewlegal.com and give them a call at 405-310-0183 or just email them at info at plainviewlegal.com. Please see the show notes for disclaimer information. But anyways, um, <laughs> How's life been since the game? You uh, you had brunch again this um this morning? Yeah, man, I had brunch with my family, and my parents, and my auntie, and my uncle. It's my auntie's birthday coming up this week, so shout out to her. Uh, but yeah, we went to Waffle Champion and OKC, so that was cool. But, Ooh, well, you yeah. said Waffle Champion. Hmm. So syrup last week, Waffle Champion this week, scratch last week, uh, Waffle Champion. This week. Oh, scratch. Scratch yeah. last week. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe a little have bit of the the neighborhood Chippen? jam next week. Yeah. No. You, to, not. you haven't been there? Oh, you no. need to try that. Wow. That's crazy. Is it, is it new or has it been around for a while? It's been around. I'm slacking, huh? Yeah. Well, it's been around. um, I haven't told you this yet, but I'll be moving back to Oklahoma just for a little bit. Oh, for real? In a couple of weeks. Yeah, so I'm moving to Ardmore, Ardmore, Oklahoma, just for a little bit. Nothing permanent, though. I got some people down there, uh, a little change of scenery, get away from home type of deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So maybe you and I can have a uh, brunch whenever you're busy. I know you're like, you know, the man on campus now and everything. So uh, whenever oh, you have time for little old me, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I always have time for you, big dog. Uh, I know, brother. I appreciate you, but yeah, you know um, how anyways, bro, a lot, a lot's been going on this weekend, and and I say a lot, but I mean a lot goes on every day. But I mean, the queen died. Um, mm-hmm. in the world of football, uh, that was hectic. Um, I almost lost my life on my dad's motorcycle. I got to tell you about that, and um. Yeah, so anyways, I'll, I'll just tell you about what I know you probably want to know about the motorcycle, right? So right. I, I've i always had a need for speed, I, I guess you would say. Uh, 
I've been pulled over a couple times, more than <laughs> what a 23-year-old probably should. But um, anyways, it's in my blood, bro. It's in my blood. My grandpa, my great-grandpa on my mom's side, he was a bootlegger. Um, my grandpa on my mom's side, he he rode motorcycles and drove fast stuff in the Army and fast cars. My dad, he drives motorcycles. And, you know, so I've always been like, yo, like, hey, Pops, when are you going to teach me? He's like, yeah, now nah, you got this whole NFL career thing and Da 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 da, and only time he'll let me get on it is if I'm moving it. And so finally, uh, what I think it was Friday or Saturday. I'm pretty sure it was Friday. He let me get on, like in the road, and like, well, not like the road, but like around the neighborhood. And uh, things were going well, bro. I'm like, okay, I'm a natural at this, you know. I'm catching on quick, and um, I'm getting overconfident, right? So he brings out his phone. He's like, yo, like I'm gonna show the motorcycle club. Like that's that's his thing. Like he's in a club. And so he's taking a video and I got so confident. I I take my eyes off the road and um, I'm looking at him like as I'm leaning into a turn and the motorcycle shoots, bro. Like <laughs> It took off. I pulled the throttle, my dumb self. I pulled the throttle and then when I, I panicked, so I just clenched down on everything. But when I clenched down, I clenched down on the clutch and then pulled down on the throttle. And then I realized it wasn't stopping. So I let go of the clutch. Then it took off even more. Then slammed on the brakes and let go of the throttle. And the bike just turned off and I almost ran into the <laughs> the swimming house. So I, I, almost, I hit the curb and like I hit my knee, my knee swollen. And I, I almost lost my life, bro. My dad was like, all right, we're done for the day. And we're just going to take a break. And I'm just like, okay, no problem. Like that's, that's fine with me. So um jay hall is here today and okay and i see why parents are sometimes a little bit more wiser than their children at points <laughs> so, shout out to yeah. my dad have you have you ever been interested in motorcycles bro uh my dad had a motorcycle uh back in the day but he blew his knee out so no not really i've, I've i'm oh, interested in them the daredevil in me is interested in, in in them but like you know with football and everything i just don't be like interested in them if that makes sense <laughs> like i was yeah, i think it'd be I cool do. i think it would be a great thrill and all that other stuff but like i'd be like yeah not worried about it right now but no. more of the story was pops was right so yeah no pops was definitely right my parents are uh are pretty smart um something actually funny happened with my mom this weekend she went out with her friends and uh i i haven't gone out for real or what one of as a matter of fact, one of the fans had hit me up on Twitter and they were like, yo, Jay Hall, we're in Charlotte. We're trying to watch the Panthers game this weekend. Da 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 da. You know any nice spots? I'm like, honestly, bro, I haven't been home in about six plus years. And I've been home for what almost a month now and I haven't really left. Like I've I've gone out with friends, I've seen Friday night lights, you know, football games, stuff like that. But I haven't done too much. And so my mom went out this weekend. And um, all her friends came over. It was like three of them. And then they were all wearing cardigans and pants. And my mom's in like heels and a sleeveless shirt. And I'm like, uh, ma'am, like you don't match everybody else. Like what is going on here? Like where's your <laughs> cardigan? Yeah. So like on the way out the door, I'm like, so is that all you're wearing? And then literally everybody stopped. <laughs> all her friends stopped, turn around and look at me. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And, she's, and she stops. And she looks at her arms and she, and she like kind of blushes a little bit. And she's like, actually, no, nah, you're kind of right. And so she goes and grabs her little cardigan and then she leaves and all her friends are laughing at her on the way out. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm like, I'm the man of the house. <laughs> <laughs> all right. A little well, reverse no, parenting are, going on right there. Yeah, man. Things are funny here at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's actually but, pretty uh, funny, though. Honestly, I, I need to get out the house though. I need to um I need to do a little something. I might go see I might go see Beamer and the gang play Georgia this coming weekend at home. So they, they play at South Carolina. No. That yeah. might be the move. Yeah, what are the what are the chances you think Beamer can give me four tickets? Four? <laughs> I don't four? know. I don't know how what's the deal with coaches and tickets, honestly. So I really don't know. I don't know the the uh percentage. <laughs> per se yeah yeah my friends were like yeah jerry why don't you just hit up the head coach and ask for tickets i'm like 
Yeah, like I'm I'm plugged in like that. Like yeah, I can I can just text Beamer and be like, "Hey, yo, cuz, I need about four ticks. <laughs> Slide them things through. Appreciate it. <laughs> Holla at you later." I mean, technically, you could. I, I guess I, I hit up Stog though. I hit up Stog because I figured his family. You know, his family is what from like his all. They're all from, from Texas. Texas. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, maybe that might be a good idea. But he was like, I'm sorry, Jay Hall, they're all coming. I'm like, dang, bro. All right. So, Oops, uh, nah, Spencer's people always travel to. I was going to say Spencer, they're from Arizona. But they always, I saw <laughs> yeah. they were at the game, the other, uh, the, their first game. So, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Spencer didn't even respond to my text about coming back on the pod. You know, remember that? The summer, so I'm not. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't remember. That I actually there. don't remember that, but that's that's crazy. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't say. Uh, I'll tell you about that off air, but we can let that. We can <laughs> let that one stop for now. In, anyways, moving on to around the world in college football, Alabama beats Texas twenty to nineteen down there in Austin, and I'm not gonna lie. I think for the very first time in my history as a Sooner, Twitter, including myself, was low key rooting. For the Longhorns, you I don't know. Were you, for the were you watching the game? Yeah, I was watching Bro, the game. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm rooting for the. I was rooting for the Longhorns, but you could just kind of oh. tell with the subtle tweets. You know, like it, it. It was a win-win situation. Let me. Let me. Let me put it. It that is way. a win-win if situation. If Texas had won, yeah, yeah, if, it's if good Texas for us. wins and looks great for the Big Twelve, yes. Yes, exactly. regardless, right. it was a win-win and because then, they were playing they, with them. So they were playing with yeah. them. So they now they're yeah. ranked. They they're ranked in the AP. They lost. They're ranked in the AP. So it still don't matter if they would have won. They would have been like top ten. So it would have been great for us. So right, right. And I I don't I think that honestly the Sooners don't really like Bama either. So I'm just like you know if, if Bama wins, then I mean whatever. We hate Texas, and then. If Texas wins, then shoot, we just go smack Texas in the you know Red River rivalry, and then we say, "Hey, Texas beat Bama, and we low key beat Bama too because we beat Texas." So, <laughs> um, anyways, Twitter was Twitter was definitely hinting towards that game, but uh, I had a good time watching it. There was a whole lot going on in in college football, bro. Texas A and M falls to App State. If mm -hmm. I'm an AD, I'm not putting App State on the non conference schedule, like point yeah. blank period. Just Bro, over really the years, the they have since yeah. Link. My fault. Yeah. I really, really App there, State they... or uh, or uh, Marshall, which is the next game we're about to talk about. But either of those, I'm probably not putting either of them on the schedule. Yeah. I don't know why I was going to say Lincoln. I'm thinking something else. But, yeah, Marshall <laughs> Marshall beats Notre Dame. What that, well, that, that was crazy because – we had just discussed Notre Dame being extremely well. Like, I was telling my I'm mom I'm sitting that. here thinking that Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm sitting I here thinking that Notre mom. Dame's a top 10 team. You know, I talked a little bit of smack about their schedule, but, you know, they go beat up on Ohio State. And I'm like, okay, they could probably, you know, compete with anybody in the nation at this point and then go blow at the Marshall. I'm like, bro, Typical come Notre on, Notre Dame. Man. Typical Notre Dame. I said the, the same thing to my mom. I said it's crazy because – I was giving Notre Dame prop Notre Dame props last week, Bro. and then they do that. I'm like, dang! I, I thought they look good, but shout out to Marshall, shout out to App mm. State, though. They be doing they, they they you know what I'm saying? They be doing that stuff. Yeah, bro. I, I got a whole list of so much that's happened. Uh, South Carolina, our well, I'm not gonna say our, but my opposite pick of the week. Uh, Arkansas played pretty well. I don't know if you saw that when they got a uh, they quarterback. Pretty yeah, nice. nice. Zayden Hazelwood played a, played a good game. Um, you know what I will say about Hazelwood? I don't know if he's had enough opp opportunities in terms of ball-wise, ball -wise, but that kid always blocks his butt off. Like, he plays super unselfish. Anytime the ball right. touches the perimeter, you always see Hazelwood blocking, you know, whether mm -hmm. it was at OU or whether it's at Arkansas. So... No doubt. I'm glad. I'm glad the former Sooner is, is doing good. Um, in the Browns game today, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, bro! Oh my, oh my gosh! Like, yeah, I saw your tweets on that game. So, ooh, I had 
bro, I tweeted something four times and deleted it four times back to back to back. <laughs> like I just, I just, ooh. Number one, I'm not mad. I'm not bad at how, mad at how slow Carolina started because I understand, you know, offenses start slow. I'm not gonna lie, you guys were a prime example of that this past weekend. But um, once the game got going towards the end, Carolina could have easily won the game. You know, one thing I hate as an offensive guy is passive play calling. You know, once they got down there towards the end zone, when the Browns started, um, well, hold on, let me put the situation into play. It was 23 to 21. All Carolina needed was a field goal. And they got all the way down there to the to their 40 yard line. And then they got super duper passive once they got in field goal range. They're like, okay, we're in field goal range. We don't need a first down. And they started running these rinky dinky run plays. Uh, run into the boundary, and um, they literally went three plays back to back to back, no yardage. And the Browns used their timeouts. You know, they kicked the field goal. Time's left on the clock. Browns ultimately go down, score. I mean, and score and win the game. When this all could have been prevented if they just kept the aggressive play calling, gotten a first down, called a timeout with what three seconds left in the game, kicked the field goal from like the fifteen yard line, and walked off the field without the defense ever having to go down there. I'm like. Oh, and it's so frustrating to watch because it's easily preventable. Like they could have easily, easily won the game regardless of what happened the first three, three and a half quarters. I'm like, bro, All it's, right, coach it's not even. Yeah, bro. And <laughs> I, I went over to my dad's house to vent, and I, I hate my dad sometimes. At the, end, at the end of all my venting, he's like, "So, are you become, gonna become a coach or like?" You're That's when I'm here. <laughs> That's what, that's exactly uh, what I just heard. I, I, I hate you too. I'm like, I, I was just about coach, to man. I was just about to say it sounds like you should probably be a coach. Bro, everybody keeps asking me that. And I'm like, honestly, I don't have a burning desire to be a coach right now. And I'm just like, I don't know. Quit asking me. So a- anyways, um, talk to me about the game, bro. Um I'm I'm over here about to blow a gasket. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna ask you. Uh, here, you talk for like the next three minutes. Give me a breather. How are right. things leading up to the game? Um, is it like per normal? Because we know the offense started out slow. So let's talk about that. This episode is supported by our friends at I9 Sports. Jeremiah, can you tell about the impact youth sports had on your life? Bro, I remember as a kid, some of my best memories are from the football and basketball teams that I've been a part of. Not only have I had great memories, but I've also had pretty cool life lessons too that i've come to use now as an adult during times of adversity yeah jay i mean i agree man you know from the trips the numerous trips you know when traveling with little league to you know some of the memories i think that that's a great starting spot for a lot of guys and i think without that a lot of guys that we play with or have played with in college in the next level wouldn't be where they are yeah, bro, for sure. Did you know Anna Sports is offering those same experiences to kids throughout Oklahoma? They offer leagues in basketball, volleyball, baseball, soccer, and flag football. Age groups vary on the sport from 3 to 14 years old. Leagues are seven weeks long, and games and practices are on the same day. It's very convenient for families as it's just a one-day-a-week commitment. They have locations in the OKC Edmond area, Yukon, Moore, and Norman. To learn more, you can visit www.i9sports.com or call 405-225-7048. All right, back to the show. Yeah, no, it was business as usual. You know, things were normal. Um, you know, it just different games start different ways. And as I told you all before, with that defense, you're going to kind of that defense takes a while to get going. You just, like, you know how it is versus that three-safety look. You, you just don't come out firing versus that defense typically. And uh, they did some good things. And then also, you know, a, a, one con about playing fast is that when you're playing fast, sometimes the defense is not aligned and they look into stuff. And that was kind of the case a lot of the time. Like they were trying to get lined up and we're trying to run the ball, establish the run game, which we did not do well in the first uh, half. And they're like just lucking into stuff. And then, like I said, that three safety look, you really have like eight people in a run game like that is accountable in the run game for them. You know, you got the bandit that's basically unblocked every time. 
and then you got uh, cut corners, and then you got the field and boundary backers that look like they're outside the box, but as soon as it's run, they're crashing the box. So basically, you got the three down, the mic, the two backers, that's six, two cut corners, and the bandit, that's all accounted for the run. So it's hard to run the ball versus that sometimes. And you got to kind of find the zones. And I think that's what happened when we when we, we started, the offense started to click. We started finding those zones. We started finding stuff that worked, kind of simplifying stuff a little bit, and then get back to the running game. And I think that's why we we overcame that. But like I said, that that we're not going to see much of that three safety look. And when you go against those, the whole premise of that defense is to keep the ball in front of them. They don't want you to hit deep shots on them and go balls and po- deep posts and stuff like that. You want to keep them in front of you. So, you know, that's just what it is, I guess. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say in order to win against a three three five defense, you have to be able to first run the ball and second play action has to be established once you run the ball in order to play with the bandit, like you said. And that's really what was killing y'all. Y'all were playing. I'm not going to say the tempo was the problem, but the lack of the run game was Mm. the problem. Like you said, I think y'all had like less than 50 yards after the first half of of rush, less than 50 rushing yards in the Mm. first half. And that was killing y'all. Absolutely killing y'all. Cause when you can't run the ball, then it makes it very hard to run RPO, which you guys run a lot of, which isn't the problem. But what happens is the bandit is now sitting on his heels waiting for the RPO rather than respecting the run. Right. He's jumping on the ball. I saw a couple times where um, Dylan, he's not able to you know go to his first read or get the ball out as quickly as possible because the band is sitting there in the middle of the field. You know, but – and our One splits kind of hurt that, too. You know how mm-hmm. typically in old offenses when we played Iowa State, we had somebody accounting for the uh, so a receiver, slot receiver. They would, you know, usually t- block the safety. Now they would go to the bandit. Well, our splits kind of hurt that. You know, our splits are super, super wide all the time, and they kind of hurt that. So just different yeah. things that we had to adjust, simplify, and, you know. Is that an adjustment you guys made, or is that just a personal notice that um, – is that something that you noticed? Uh, I don't know if we really made that adjustment. We did start – we made a couple adjustments to get to the bandit, but it wasn't yeah. necessarily the slots. So it was more so the tight ends, you know. So uh, was or, or anything, the line getting up there. What I will say that I noticed that – um, I think the special teams, specifically punt, needs to be cleaned up a lot. Um, I don't know if you saw, but the punt, uh, a punt was almost blocked three times, and the exact same thing happened last week twice. And, um, you know, I'm speaking from a viewer's perspective, but it doesn't look very crisp. You know, it looks like something – it looks like a bend but don't break type of situation. Mm. And if it's one thing I've noticed about the history of our program, especially since I've been there, if it's noticeable early on in the season, typically it doesn't show until about week seven, week eight, week nine, because twice Turk had a bad ball snapped to him, and um, he had to get the ball out super quick. And it doesn't really go noticed because Turk, you know, he has a leg, so, like, all he needs is one step, boom, and, you know, the ball's out of there. Right. But um, I, I will say the punt, punt team needs to be kick, um tighten up a little bit but other than that bro i mean i'm I'm never one to overreact uh i like that once the offense started going it uh it started going and i'm glad that levy's not afraid to keep taking shots that's one thing i will say because that boy marvelous can fly yeah shout out to that boy marv man shout out to that boy marv i mean I was thinking, I'm like, are we going to have to get him on the podcast again? But I'm like, bro, like, I need to wait for, like, another week for him to have, like, a 300-yard. Because, <laughs> like, to to the average, to the, to the fans, it's like, oh, that boy's cold, and we could easily get him on the pod. But to us, it's like, that's, like, normal, bro. Like, that's just the typical Marvin right. Mims. 
what I will say is that anytime you run a, a 10 something in a hundred meter, it, it really don't matter. You know, speed is speed is speed. You get out there and try and keep up with a 10, eight and see, see how that works with you against the post. So <laughs> he runs great routes, especially great deep routes, double moves and stuff. And we definitely utilize them when, you know, doing stuff like that. And when you have the routes along with the just crazy speed and the long stride speed, you know, that's the thing. Like, there's there's different types of speed, and he definitely has, like, gap speed. Like, he can gap yeah. it. Like, because he has such long strides for his, you know, his height. And, um, and he just is such a smooth runner. And I think when you have that combination, you know, it just – he gets open really easy. Yeah. And it also helps that he's he's very natural at tracking the ball and just a natural catcher. I think he tracks the ball really well, you know. You know, we got guys like um like C D who's a very natural tracker and I think he he he's underrated as far as how he tracks the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like when you got a guy that's a deep ball threat and like usually the ball comes over his shoulder most of the time. People be like, oh, you know, he's, you know, he's a good tracker, but he's nothing crazy. Instead of those guys that go up and, you know, high point the ball all yeah. the time and make acrobatic catches. But I think he tracks the ball really, really well. And I think that's also an, another aspect about him that makes him so, so talented. Yeah, honestly, I don't think it, it matters, you know, whether it's his speed or his route running, because as a coach, you always play to your player's strength. You know, if he can take the top off, then let him take the top off. Like, let's not right. make this very hard. You know, if somebody runs a 4-2, four, 4-3, four, we're going to let him run drags and posts. We're going right. to let him push in any direction vertically. And why stop his acceleration? You know, if it's, if it's his God-given ability to run fast, let him run fast. You no know, it, it's, it's like you said, CD – CD could break the brakes off of somebody in any route. It didn't matter what it was. Let him run whatever route he feels comfortable with the most. And let's let's not – football is not a very complicated game, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's not a matter of fact of how good you are in every area of, you know, football. You know, it's, it's a matter of what you bring to the table. Like for me, I'm not very fast. I'm not the strongest player, but – I'm pretty smart and I got good hands. You know, I have zero career drops and I typically get open most of the time in the middle of the field. That's what I do best. And a lot of times whenever I got the ball, it was in the flat. It, it was a, it was a delayed release. It was, you know, something like that, you know, and I'm not here to say that all oh, you got to, you know, do this for Jay Hall just to get him open. Like, no, play to your player's strength. Marvin is fast. Let fast guys run. So no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, man. We Like I said, we started finding the gaps, started finding the, you know, things that work. They started there. They started breaking instead of bending, you know what I'm saying? Their defensive mm -hmm. scheme. And uh, once it started, once we started rolling, man, our, that's the thing. Like if you came on the sideline and that's another good thing about this team is nobody was panicking, you know, like you could hear like literally everybody in the stands, our whole our, our whole fan base panicking, like, oh my God, Kent State, which by the way, Kent State is a pretty good team and no, yeah. they always win their their conference. And last year, I think it was last year, at number one Iowa, they went into third quarter, one score game. The year before that, A and M in college station, one score game. So this ain't something that this ain't like an anomaly. Like this is something they do. You know what I'm saying? And that's not making any excuses for us. We got to play better. But like those guys, you know, got to give credit to those guys as well. You know, yeah. and uh, good coaching staff. Apparently, the guys were saying, you know, that they changed a lot on their off on the offensive end. You know, their offense changed a lot going into the game. You know, so this is good coaching, and you know what I'm saying, guys that play hard. So yeah, no, you never, I will you say can never. Yeah, I will say their quarterback, cold. No, he was good. He said their he was going to be back, better. Yeah, their running back can play, and that mm -hmm. receiver you was talking about going to the NFL, legit, without Close. a doubt. He's going. He's going to have a shot somewhere. Um, the boys can ball. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, the pro they got a pretty nice program. Their national championship team and their conference, like you said, um, 
But yeah, that quarterback can play, especially after that one play when uh, the ball was snapped. I don't know if you were watching, but when the safety. ball was snapped, and yeah, oh yeah, the safety, and he got all the way back to the line of scrimmage. I'm like, that boy can ball. Like, yeah. I, as a, as a fan now, I try and give respect to both teams. Like, I'm a I'm a Sooner fan, you know, diehard Sooner fan, you know. Right. Ugh, I played there, but I always I'm I always give my kudos when when I see it. And uh, no doubt. Back to back weeks, we've seen good quarterbacks on the opposing team, and I'm here for it, man. I'm I'm here to see y'all rise to. Well, I don't want to say y'all rise to the, you know, uh, they obviously got the rise, but I'm here to, for a good game. You know, and they did a good job. What I didn't know is that Bob Stoops was there at one point. Venables was there at one point. Like, it seemed like half of the former Oklahoma coaching staff was there before. Um, I wish I could remember. But during the game, bro, there is so many people that have coached and have come through Kent State. Um, I remember them saying Bob was there for a year. But uh, kudos to their program. They did a good job. Yeah, they no, they, they they definitely did a good job. They did, they, a, great they, they job. did a good job. What I will say though, you mentioned the fans were panicking, and the announcers. I think in the second half they were like, um, "It's e-, when the defense was out there, they were like, it's easy for them to hard count the defense because we're eighty thousand strong and there's zero crowd noise." And I was like, "Whoa, yeah." Oh, that's what I was gonna get to. I didn't even say the whole point behind that. Like everybody, yeah. you know, in the stands was panicking. But uh, the cool thing about our team is we don't panic at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We stay together. And that's real reminiscent of how, like, we were during, uh, I mean, different situations totally. But, like, in 2019 versus Baylor, it was, like, the same type of uh, composure. You know what I'm saying? And this team, I think, has really good composure, and we don't panic. And we stay together. And then uh, – Offense, you just made adjustments, telling each other we got to go. And then, man, once this offense gets going now, it's very explosive. Like it can go, yeah. you know. So, I think Oklahoma, especially since Lincoln's been there, historically has had unfair expectations for the offense compared to the defense. You know, because when we look at it, the score, would, you only allowed three points. Right. And so for any other program in the country, it's like, okay, they only allowed three points, th- three to 33. Great game. Great ball game. But like to Sooner fans, they're expecting a show. You know, they're expecting big plays here, big plays there. And I think that's a little unfair sometimes because, you know, it's, it's football. It's not like every game is going to be, you know, like, ah, ah like we just absolutely killed it. Yay, oh yeah. Anybody can, you know, anybody can lose to anybody on any given day. We saw that this weekend. App State, Marshall, you know what I'm saying? All the all the works. Yeah, yeah, I mean I will I will add that um the defense played great. Um Billy had a strip fumble. Um they were talking about Reggie and apparently his grandma has cancer. Um Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't I didn't know about that. Uh she came to the first game, uh, put off her chemo, and then she had chemo this week or here soon. Yeah. And I didn't know about that. Um, Justin Harrison had an interception. Uh, the defensive line was killing it overall, like not just Reggie. Um, boy, Danny Stutzman played his butt off, boy. Had over 10 tackles. I think 12, 13, somewhere there in the game. Yeah, like 11 or 12, something like that. Yeah. Stutzman. We got to get him on here at some point. Yeah, yeah we had multiple. We had three guys with over uh, double digit tackles. That was the first time since like seventeen or nineteen. One of those. Mm-hmm. The coach read it off yesterday, but yeah, defense uh, played really well, man. They did good. Um, Drake with the dive into the end zone, no shoe. That was a cool I actually play. Didn't that he didn't have his shoe on during that play. Yeah, and so yeah, afterwards. After- after he broke the first tackle, shoe came off. And my favorite play, the sidestep from Marcus Major, king of the state is what I call him, the Oklahoma native, my yeah, lord. That was disgusting. Oh, that boy can ball. I'm here for that. I'm here for the Marcus Major train because, oof, I'm, yeah, I'm here that for that. That was it. nice. That was disgusting. 
Hey, mm. last week it was EG. This week it was Marcus Major. I'm I'm here for the backfield. Oh my goodness. Mm. And the Vegas native got some touches. I, I I'm when he gets in the game, I'm paying attention because although he fumbled after the first game, uh, like I said, he runs hard. So I'm looking forward yeah. to his future as well. No doubt. But overall, man, um, it's a dub, two and zero. Oh, strip the nails down. Yep. Back to, Back to it to next studs. week. Yes, sir. That is all we have for this week's podcast. Be sure to tune in this week for our second episode, especially for the problems on the prairie segment. I love some good gossip. So. As we said before, feel free to DM us on the podcast page on Twitter or on Instagram. Also, you can send in your problems through podcast on the prairie at well pod on the prairie at gmail.com. Pod on the prairie at gmail.com. We'll have some nice little gossip for you guys, hopefully here soon, and some more talking points. Who knows what happened between now and Wednesday? Maybe even Thursday. I don't know. But, Brayden, do you have anything for the people? Nah, man. See y'all next week. See y'all next week. <laughs>